Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology and in this video tutorial we'll be talking about endocytosis and exocytosis. We will see what are this process and we'll also see the difference between endocytosis and exocytosis. Now the, the answers are present in their names. Endocytosis, exocytosis. Endo means inside, inside and exo means going outside. So endo means something is going inside, exo means going outside. Cytosis, cytosis means when the situation is going on for a cell. So endocytosis means inside the cell, going inside the cell and exocytosis means going outside the cell. So that is the term. In endocytosis, cells slowly start to take molecules inside uh, the cell, inside the cytosol, while exocytosis occurs when some protein particles or anything that is generated inside the cell needs to go out, the cell will put them outside the cell. That is the exocytosis. Now what happens in endocytosis is normally endocytosis is required in multiple cases like there are some food particle for the cell when a cell need to, to engulf them, they will do the endocytosis process to get the food particle. There could be other applications of endocytosis as well and there are different types of endocytosis. Now uh, the way if you think of getting food, there could be two types of endocytosis. There could be uh, phagocytosis, there could be phenocytosis. Now phenocytosis means when the cells start to engulf a food which is liquid in nature. So it's can, it can be like a, like a cellular drinking or they start to drink something, the cell start to drink something. So if I draw it, let's say, let's say if I draw the cell, this is the cell. And let's say there are some molecules, there's some in the liquid uh, outside the cell, it's filled with some, uh, some important food particle uh, in the liquid medium, obviously. Now the cells slowly start to engulf those materials inside. How? The cells slowly start to modify its uh, cytoskeleton structure. You know, there are small elements inside the cell, small proteins that make a cytoskeleton of the cell. Th those are known as microtubules. Now, microtubules are smaller proteins which when organized one after another give the enough strength of the cell and proper structural integrity for the cell. Now, that things maintain the structure of the cell. So what it will do, slowly they start to modify the structure near uh, these food particles. So what it will do, is slowly they start to create an engulfment, something, some, some pinch in the membrane like that. And, and those food particles will be present near to the pinch. And what they will do is that, those microtubules, they start to grow those cytoskeleton fibers and they will force this two side, this two side from these two directions so that these areas of the cell, they start to go up and they will slowly start to engulf this complete liquid materials. So as microtubules are rearranged inside the cell, what will happen is that they will form something like this. And all those materials, remember, are present somewhere inside, okay? And all these things are possible due to the realignment, rearrangement of microtubules. And after some time, what will happen? These two terminal will fuse with each other. And when these two terminal will fuse, you will find all those materials or food particles in the liquid or liquid solution will come inside just like a vesicle or you can say a vacuole. So inside the vesicle, they will be filled with water content or solute uh, solution content that will be filled with uh, those specific uh, molecules, specific food particles or anything they deal with. This is how they engulf a specific uh, uh, food particle. Now that could be either engulfment of liquid medium. If they engulf liquid medium by this fashion, it will be known as phenocytosis. But in case of phagocytosis, they engulf large particles, solid substances. Now phagocytosis work in slightly different fashion. This is the phenocytosis that I talked about. In phagocytosis, they require phagocytosis either to take solid food particles or sometimes to take some or kill some bacteria or other foreign materials. Now our immune system cells like macrophage, they're specifically designed to phagocyte or to engulf big 
cells or debris of cell which are the breakdown components of the cell or when the cell is die, uh, dead and also they start killing and, and engulfing bacteria and other uh, foreign particles or harmful particles in our body. So if we look at here the phagocytosis process in little bit more details. So what happens in phagocytosis? There are two types. One is a general, a standardized method of phagocytosis. Another one is the receptor mediated phagocytosis. These are the two methods of phagocytosis. In the general method of phagocytosis, what we see is let's say this is the this is the bacteria, for example. This is the bacteria. Now the macrophage is a phagocytic cell, and macrophage detects the bacteria. How will it detect the bacteria? It will detect, let's say, by specific receptor interaction or not. Okay. Now if it detects with the specific receptor interactions. In that case, they will go for the receptor mediated endocytosis or receptor mediated phagocytosis. Now, in other hand, there is another way that this same macrophage can take some broke down components. Let's say a cellular lining and those cells are now dead. So, there are some tissue debris coming out. These are some tissue debris that are coming out after the death of the cell due to some sort of infection. So, those debris should be cleaned from the body. So, what? this phagocyte can do. This phagocyte can go and simply again with the help of the rearrangement of microtubules and all those cellular cytoskeleton proteins, they will slowly start to engulf this solid fragments or death debris from the cell so that those things are taken care of, those things are released. On the other hand, let us say there are some bacteria and bacteria have specific uh, molecules are surrounding it which are acting as antigens our body because our body will generate immune response against those antigens. Now these are some antigenic portions where our body develops some antibody against it. An antibody is going to interact with those antigens and surround the bacteria. Okay? At that condition, there are specific receptors present on the surface of, on the surface of this phagocytic cell. And now the phagocytic cell, when, when interacting with those receptor, with the help of those receptor with the antibody or antibody coated bacteria, then they will signal the cell slowly start to rearrange the cytoskeleton again in the surrounding place. They slowly start to build a kink and then slowly they will engulf this bacteria, slowly engulf the bacteria inside that cell. Okay? And that is the idea of this cell. Now, this is known as a receptor mediated endocytosis and this is not only for phagocytosis of bacteria, but it is also true for other cases like, like you say, uh, in some case, uh, some, some other processes where a specific signaling molecule or food particle with a specific molecule will come in and it will interact with the cell and then what they will do is that they will use uh, the rearrangement of cytoskeleton along with that they will add some helper proteins known as clathrin. Clathrin. Clathrins are helper proteins. They are uh, kind of, the structure is like this, like lambda. It's a uh, three hand like structures. They will slowly organize themselves there. So as they will start slowly organize themselves and they will form what is a called is a clathrin coated pit. Now this clathrin coated pit will slowly help this cell to engulf the receptor attached molecule. That could be a bacteria, that could be any other particle it will help this cell to engulf the bacteria or that solid particle inside the cell. So once they will engulf the solid particle inside the cell, what it will look like? It looks like, like say the clathrin will cover everything like this and this is the membrane. So inside this membrane, there will be the solid particles present like that. They will engulf it. Now, this engulfment is not the end. Alongside with this engulfment, they need to take care of these materials. So, whatever materials they engulfed inside, the food particles, they, they need to chew them and break them in small fragments. For example, in some cases, when they bring cholesterol, they will also bring some other apolipoproteins. Okay? 
Now they will they will break down those apolipoproteins into amino acids and fatty acids and they will also release the cholesterol inside the cell so that the cell can take those things and process those things. Similarly, if they take any, card, any sort of this bacteria or any other foreign uh, pathogen inside, there, is, there are other membrane, uh, other membrane bound vesicles present inside filled with enzymes, uh, acidic content and enzymes and those, those are sometimes lysosomes, sometimes modified lysosomes which contains a lot of hydrolytic enzymes. Now after this engulfment, those hydrolytic enzyme filled chamber will fuse with this phagocytic vehicle and this fusion will increase uh, the acidity inside the vehicle and that will ultimately cause the release of all those all those calcium coated molecules as well as breakdown of all those components that are present inside the cell, inside this engulfed vehicle and that how they can use this so this is the way of not only eating a food or not only taking something inside but also processing inside which is linked with each other on the other hand the exocytosis if you look exocytosis means something is going out inside from the cell okay so inside the cell out that is exocytosis outside the cell now in this case let's say the same scenario this is a cell and the cell contains let's say a cell produces a specific proteins okay the proteins are produced inside and once the proteins are produced those proteins are placed in a uh, I mean uh, once the proteins are produced inside the endoplasmic reticulum remember so these are the ER uh, and inside the ER the protein is produced let's say this is the protein which is produced inside the ER now then this proteins will be will be placed in the Golgi apparatus because you know Golgi apparatus is where the proteins will be processed and further modification of the proteins will be done so this proteins are transferred to the Golgi apparatus and mature there post translation modification will go there after that, this Golgi apparatus will finally put these proteins in the mature vehicles or vesicles and all those vesicles will contain specific proteins. Let's say some of those proteins destined to deliver outside the cell as a secretory protein molecules. Okay. So in this case, those vesicles contain secretory proteins. Now once those vesicles slowly go and fuse with the cell membrane, that will release the molecule. How, how will they fuse? The scenario is this is the cell this is the vehicle and the vehicle is moving closer and now the vehicle is in contact then after that what we will see like this right just the opposite fashion carries a protein and the protein will come out this is the way this is the way the cell works the exocytosis works remember so they, they contain this vesicle, the vesicle is processed from the beginning of the protein production in ER, then it is again transferred to Golgi apparatus where it is sorted, modification take place, then they are fused and put inside the vesicle and the vesicle is a delivery vehicle. The delivery vehicle or vesicle will go and fuse with the cell membrane and the fusion will be in direct contact with the plasma membrane and the membrane of the vesicle and those are same components because these vesicles are generated also from the pinch of the plasma membrane. So once they will be fused, membrane will get larger and the molecule will come out. This is exocytosis. Exocytosis is also required for secretion of proteins and other chemical mediators from a cell. And it is also there are multiple examples uh, that are present in immunology as we are giving more examples from immunology related perspective the process of exocytosis occurs in immunology like secretion of interleukins secretion of prostaglandin histamine and so many different things so this in a sense is endocytosis and exocytosis process okay and the difference between these two process is that endocytosis sometimes require energy when they get the receptor mediated endocytosis they require energy from the ATP hydrolysis for the arrangement of all clathrin molecules together and in some other case exocytosis sometimes also need uh, energy but in very rare cases on those cases so this in a sense is endocytosis and exocytosis if you like the video please hit the like button share the video with your friend and definitely subscribe to my channel to get more videos like that thank you